Let me ask you this. What would you suggest or recommend as far as a, th a thinking process? Short when, you, when you wake up and you, when you, yeah, all yeah, right. It's <laughs> good one. That's good. Uh, when you wake up and you realize you've just been marinating in resistance, because it's kind of that moment where you wake up you and you're like, oh choices. my God, how do you You've walk got two through choices. That? When you first wake up and you realize that. Now, when you first wake up, that's not what you're going to be thinking about, because when you first wake up, you're more like in the satisfaction vicinity. But if you've just sort of come to your senses, because your strong negative emotion has sort of got your attention, so you wake up and you realize that you're really in a negative place and that you've been there for a while, is your question is, what do you do then? Well, what if that negative place you've been in looks like a disease? But here's the thing that we want you to hear. Don't do it when it is so hard. We were visiting with a woman one day on the telephone years ago when Esther still had time for that. And she wasn't having any of us. She wanted us to tell her fortune and she wanted it to be a good one. And she wanted us to do whatever it took to make her fortune the way she wanted it to be. And we wanted to help her understand that she creates her own reality. And we wanted her to understand some of the vibrations that she was offering and she was completely resistant to us. We were really not helping her. So we said, let's talk about some other things. Like what? So we chose three topics, blue glass and butterflies and feathers, because there was nothing in her vibration that was resistant in nature about any of those topics. And we wanted to activate those subjects in her so that the universe could deliver those subjects to her so that she would get the point of what we were making. Well, she didn't like our conversation about any of those things. We hung in there for well over a minute on each one of them. And then the conversation was over. She was gone. And Esther was not really aware of it. She sort of hears, but not really aware of it. No one else was in the room. So then Jerry and Esther went to lunch. They were in La Jolla, California, by San Diego. And so they got out of the car, and they're going down the sidewalk, and all of a sudden, Esther had an irresistible impulse to go into a store. Now, that's not weird for Esther. She has a lot of those irresistible impulses to go. But this one was undeniable. She was going in there, whether Jerry was going to come with her or not. So he followed her in, and in the back of the store was a whole wall of blue glass. Ceiling to floor, a big wall of blue glass, every color, every texture, every density. And Esther didn't think anything of it. They looked around a little bit, then they went off to lunch. After lunch, they left the restaurant and they walked down to the cove of La Jolla. And as they were walking across a big apron of grass, a flurry of butterflies so intense that they had to stop talking so that they didn't eat them, just walked with them for about 20 steps. They couldn't shake them. They couldn't get out of the hurricane of butterflies. And then it lifted off. And a little boy is running toward them. And Jerry said, look at that little boy. He looks like he knows us. He walked up to Esther and handed her a feather. And then Esther knew that a little bit of attention to things that have no resistance will manifest. Now, logic must tell you that if attention to a subject with no resistance will bring results, then you got to turn those subjects that matter to you into subjects of no resistance. And that's the rub right there, isn't it? How do you do that? Well, you do it by starting with things that are easy until you gain your confidence. You do it by letting butterflies and blue glass and feathers show up irrationally and in a convergence within a very short period of time so that when you contemplate it, you know for sure that that was law of attraction responding to an active vibration within you. And then you decide, what's the active vibration within me? Now, here's the thing. You can't, and Jesus knew that he couldn't too, you can't vibrate for someone else. You can influence their vibration by yours being so solid. When you look toward what you want for another and what you know they want, and you own that vibration, and you never look back at where they are, you just keep moving toward who they really are, every now and again, they catch a glimpse of you and they come along. But in the moment that you look back, now you've engaged in that human thing again. You see? 
You've engaged in that human thing. You've got to be not human on these things for a little while. You got to be inner being like. You got to be source like. You got to be solution, not problem. You've got to be answer, not question. You got to be feeling good, not feeling bad. So, really, it's so much simpler than all these words make it sound like. You just have to care so much about how you feel. But your environment has trained you to believe that if you're not sad when someone's sad, something's wrong with you. And we want you to understand when they're sad and now you're sad, you're of no value to them at all. And we're not asking you to be glad about their sadness, we're asking you to be glad about things that you can be glad about. You see, we're not asking you to look at someone in distress and be happy about it. That's not possible. Their own inner being isn't doing that. Their own inner being is not looking at their plight. Their own inner being is looking at their solution, and that's why their plight feels so bad to them. You feel bad because of your disconnection, not because of your plight. Your plight is your disconnection. Nice to know. So satisfaction. We are appreciating how stubborn you are. <laughs> I don't mean it like. It's I, all right, but I knew I was going to get in. It's all right. Thing. Well, you are representing what so many feel about so many things, and this conversation is getting right to the heart of why more people don't find more solutions about things they really care about. It's because they feel like you, and they're justified in doing it. But just because you're justified in doing it, you could jump off a building in perfect justification. Somebody's chasing me. I don't want them to catch me. But you're still going to fall far. The law of gravity is not going to say we'll make an exception. He's justified. <laughs> you're not going to fall up. You're going to fall down. Esther has begged us on many occasions through the years. Please let me be the one exception to the law of attraction. Please. She doesn't mean it. The law of attraction's consistency is your very best friend, and you understanding where you stand within it is such a wonderful thing. And you understanding your emotional guidance system is just the best thing ever. And you gaining control of your own satisfaction and more is just such a lovely thing. And you'll find yourself more and more tuned in, tapped in, turned on because you've practiced it, you've prepaved it, you've allowed yourself to be it. So look at it this way. We really like the image that forms in your mind when you hear us say this: Your inner being is out there ahead of you, prepaving your trail, carving out your path of most allowance or your path of least resistance, believing in you and knowing that you can have that or be that or do that, clearing all the brush resistance out of the way. And paving the highway to make it a comfortable ride for you, because you did the real work. You sifted and sorted through the contrast, and you said, "I want this." And when you did, your inner being got on that, and the law of attraction responded to the focus of your inner being, and all that's been cleared. So now here you are, having heard what we've said, and choosing things that are easier is the easiest way to go about it. So you're following that train of thought. You're looking for reasons to be optimistic. You're thinking about things that are satisfying. You're making lists of positive aspects. You're meditating. So you're on that path. You're in that flow. And some of the things that you're thinking about are people who are well in your vortex that aren't well in their now reality, but they're well in your now reality because your now reality is focused here, not there. Here, isn't it? So now. You're so clear about that, and words are occurring to you, and you're not looking back at them where they are. You're not trying to reassure them. You're full of confidence. You're feeling good. They catch a glimpse of that, and they move in the direction with you about that. That's what true upliftment is. True upliftment is catching a glimpse of who they really are and what they really want, and holding that image clearly. So that maybe, just maybe, they can catch a glimpse of it. That's what healing is. That's what teaching is. That's what uplifting is. That's what living happily ever after is. Maybe what it really comes down to. Maybe this is a good way to say it. What reality are you wanting to face? The reality that they're wanting to let loose of, or the reality that they're wanting to move toward? 
Jerry watched Esther in the monster bus. She'd be wailing down the highway and he'd say, look, it's a rainbow, and she'd start moving toward the rainbow. <laughs> he got so that he didn't point out anything that wasn't straight ahead. <laughs> because you go where your thoughts are. Now, can you feel how much more resolved you feel about this? And so now? Well, it feels We know good. that this is, feels like it's taking a long time. I'm sorry. But these are the answers <laughs> to everything that you care about everything that you care about i think you just simply put satisfaction is the way to well-being to to healing just find satisfaction and make it easier on yourself if i reach for satisfaction when i'm not too far from it i can find it easily and once i've isolated it in the absence of resistance that satisfaction will turn to more it will turn to confidence and empowerment and invincibility and certainty, it will turn to the knowing, the knowing of source. To the well-being itself. The knowing, the knowing. And so what's tripping you up is that you want to get a hold of a little bit of it and then you want to shine it on somebody to help them. But if you're not solid in it, in the moment that you look back, don't look back. Don't look back. Your inner being never looks back. Your inner being took the bounce from what you said you wanted and only focuses forward. When you look back, you disconnect from your power. And you know what? Here it is. Drum roll, please. Current manifested reality is back. It's back. It's like gum you've chewed the flavor out of. It's over. Where the action is, is in the vortex. That's where all of your power is. That's where your inner being is. That's where you are. That's where the largest part of you is. And if you're not moving in the direction of who you really are, then you are disempowering yourself. And satisfaction is the gateway to that. Oh, those are perfect words. Satisfaction. Perfect words. Satisfaction. That will be the track title for this segment. Satisfaction is the gateway to everything that you want. You've got to practice satisfaction when it's easy. It's really easy. When Esther gets up in her treehouse, it's so easy to be satisfied. All she can see are treetops and birds. So easy. But you want to train yourself into unconditional satisfaction because everybody that you want won't be well so that you can just look at them and feel satisfaction. You got to train yourself into unconditional satisfaction. How are you? I feel so satisfied. Why? Because I want to. <laughs> Everything must be going really good, as far as I know. As far as I'm willing to admit, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Satisfied and more. Satisfied and more. So good. Enough? That's plenty. This Thank is a really so good much. time for a segment of refreshment.